Friday, everyone. Today I wanted to start off by talking about metabolic syndrome. We get questions about exactly what is metabolic syndrome versus prediabetes versus diabetes itself. Um, so a lot of it when it comes to the prediabetes state or metabolic syndrome is a little bit of semantics. So metabolic syndrome is essentially a state of prediabetes. But technically speaking, you could be prediabetic if your fasting blood sugar is elevated, even if you don't meet the other criteria for metabolic syndrome. And then, of course, there's actual diabetes. And the criteria for diabetes is a fasting blood sugar, actually you would need technically two, above 126, or a hemoglobin A1C above 6.5. There's also something called a glucose tolerance test that can also qualify you for the diagnosis of diabetes. It's just not used as frequently anymore because it requires several blood draws. So the most common things that we see are fasting blood sugar above 126 or a hemoglobin A1C above 6.5. But let's now focus on metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? Well, in order to meet the criteria of metabolic syndrome, and again, this is the picture that I draw for my patients. If we talk about metabolic syndrome, okay, in order to get that diagnosis, you have to have three of five criteria. And I like to think about metabolic syndrome as a tree. And that'll make sense in just a minute why. But when we talk about metabolic syndrome, we think of the five criteria as branches on this tree. So let's go over them to begin with. So branch number one is a diagnosis of hypertension, okay, or high blood pressure. Number one. Criteria number two would be elevated triglycerides, okay? And an elevated triglyceride level would be anything above 150. And those can be obtained from any fasting lipid profile that you might have. Criteria number three is a low HDL. In the past, referred to as the good cholesterol, but as I've said in videos before, that's not necessarily a fair um, name. But a low good cholesterol, and what is a low good cholesterol? A low good cholesterol for women would be under 50, and for men, it would be under 40. All right, criteria number four, excuse me, is an elevated waistline. And criteria number five would be an elevated blood sugar. All right, so why do I like to think about it this way? I like to think about it this way for two reasons. Number one, it's important to realize that the sum of these parts is greater than the individual pieces when it comes to cardiovascular risk. So if you have this collection of, of uh, problems, your risk for cardiovascular disease is greater than if we just looked at them individually. So that's reason number one. That's important for everybody to appreciate. Again, going back to the idea that this is a pre-diabetic state, and we all know that diabetes increases cardiovascular risk. That's not just with the heart either. Also increases the risk for stroke. Many other problems, of course, down the line. But what we're talking about here is our, our vascular risk. So vascular risk increases significantly with this constellation of problems. But I like to say that the more important reason to think about it this way is the approach to treatment. Because I'll tell you in this country, here's how this problem is dealt with. Someone walks into their doctor's office and they have the diagnosis of high blood pressure. So guess what gets tossed at them? A prescription. Here's a medicine for that. Maybe two, maybe three. Then what happens is they come in and their triglyceride levels are elevated. So what happens as a result of that? Another pill. And your good cholesterol is low, so here's some niacin, and your waistline, so here's some fenteramine, and your blood sugar is elevated, here's some metformin. And before we realize it, people are sitting here with fistfuls of medication. But instead, if we realize something very important, and that is that the trunk of the tree is the same for all these problems, and that is insulin. So instead, if we approach this problem by chopping down the tree, the branches can't exist. And that's the approach with a low-carb, high-fat dietary intervention. 
we want to get the tree down here, okay? And the beauty of it is, this doesn't involve, again, pills. If we can chop the tree here, those aren't necessary. And that's a big goal. And another thing when it comes to medications, I mean, medication problems, side effects, you know, all kinds of things, hospitalizations of people because of problems with medications. Those kinds of things don't have to exist if you're treating the problem with a dietary intervention. So just a way to bring this kind of all together. Metabolic syndrome, what is it? It's the tree and all the problems that come along with the branches. But again, the treatment, the solution is to deal with the problem at the trunk. Hope that helped. Thank you.